And so every situation you are going through, he has already provided the answer in his word. And I dare you to ask him, what is it? Because the young folks are like, oh yeah, pastor, I hear you. But you know, there are things that are happening right now that didn't used to happen back in the days. What is happening? AI. It's all in the Bible. Some of us don't even understand what the Bible says in the last days. Knowledge shall abound. The level of knowledge, the level of information, Bible says will be crazy. Crazy. So what is new under the sun? Bible says everything, everything you could potentially think about. Like I, I, I will meet a couple of pastors that are frustrated about virtual ministry. Folks don't want to come into the building. I say, if they don't want to come into the building, ta-da, wake up. God is telling you that times and seasons have changed. Isn't it God that says I will do a new thing? So why are you giving credit to the devil and saying that technology is of the devil, social media is of the devil? The devil has no bone of creation. The best the devil does is to take that which God creates and pervert it for his own agenda. Creation is of God. Creation is of God. The guy who created television, he says the reason why I'm creating television is to tell a vision. That was the meaning of television. And the devil, of course, would take that and use it for his own agenda. And so God allows all these creation to happen. And I love it. Look at the way God preceded this season we are living in. He preceded it with what we call pandemic. But God had to place a pause on the whole world. And you dare tell me that it is the devil that created a pandemic. It's because you don't know God. Read your Bible. You know what God says? God says, I'm the creator of good and evil. It's in your Bible. He says, I'm the creator. Some of us are like, no, no, no. That can't be, the, that can't be God. You feel embarrassed to associate evil with God. <laughs> and I said, that is how hypocritical we are as believers. And that's why I said last week, if you have... Uh, uh, um, uh, a funeral home and business is slow. What kind of prayer are you going to pray? A funeral home. Lord, business is slow. You got to do something. What are you trying to say? God, kill more people? We're so hypocritical. We don't want to represent the kingdom that we claim to be part of. I shared with you the story of the young man that was so reckless. He grew up and he was just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But prior to that, he ran into a problem and this man came around and saved him. He was a little baby. But after he grew up, he was doing all kinds of crazy stuff, getting into the problems with the law, being arrested, being ticketed, being sent to jail. Finally, he's brought to court. He stands before the judge and he remembers that the judge is the same judge that saved him when he was a young boy. And so the judge is about to pass sentence and say, your majesty, your highness, I have a statement to make. And then he goes, oh, please, I just wanted to remind you that I'm the young boy that, you know, 35 years ago you saved. Trying to get a pass with a judge. And the judge says, yes, I think I remember you. When you were a young kid, you ran into that problem and I saved you. But today I'm not your savior, I'm your judge. I'm just trying to let somebody understand that there is a season where God is your savior. But a day is going to come where he's going to be a judge. And he's not going to hand out anymore. And that is why we must see the two natures of God. We cannot just see him as an everlasting, an ever long-suffering God. Bible calls him long-suffering. Not ever suffering. It means though it is long, it is not forever. There's an end. And we got to see the two natures of God. That even though he loves us, when he gets into the place of judgment, there is no room for love. He says on that day, he will separate the goats from the sheep. He says on that day, he will say to one, stand on my right and to one, stand on my left. He says on that day he will send some to hell burning with fire. And he will say to some also, thou good and faithful servant, come into my rest. 
We're talking about the same God who loves. He said, Esau I have hated and Jacob I have loved. And then he goes on to say, is there a righteousness with God? No, he answers. So we cannot only see one side of God and run with it. And so when there is pandemic, we say it is the devil. Please don't mistake the miracles of God and give the credit to the devil. God brought a pandemic as a transition to the new season. I tell folks, I tell pastors that are like, oh, virtual ministry is not, it's not God. It is the devil. I said, because you limit the power of God. You know, Jesus met a man. And by the time Jesus was done conversating with a man, Sister Rosalind, Jesus looked at that man and said, the whole of Israel. I've never seen anybody with this kind of faith. Why did he just say that? Because the man requested for a Zoom meeting. No, the man had a child that was sick. And Jesus was so busy. Jesus was like, when I'm done, I'll come to your house to heal the child. And you know what the man said? He said, sir, I'm a man under authority. I say to one, come, they come. I say to one, go, they go. So you don't have to come to my house. Just speak virtually. Just speak virtually and my child will be healed. So that is why those of you on Facebook right now, the word is coming with power to you. Those of you on YouTube and Zoom, you can receive the word in power. Because that is what Jesus did. Bible says he prayed for that child that was several miles away from the location where they were. And the Bible says that suddenly, that same time Jesus was praying, the child got healed. How dare you limit the power of God? That is why you can pray for somebody in the Caribbean right now from here and the person will get healed. That is the power of God. Glory to Jesus. So virtual is of God and not of the devil. Hallelujah. Now when we talk about emotions, there are so many things we got to talk about. Because some of you are getting ready to marry, but you don't even understand the place of emotions in your relationship. And that is why you, you know, dating all kinds of boys and girls. Like you're testing out cars from the dealership. You're doing a test drive. Test drive. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, help us. Say, Lord, help me. Ah. Now, like I said before, some are anxious over many things. Some are even walking in bitterness as believers. And these bitterness are even as a result of past heads. Well, for others, it, it's not just, you know, bitterness from past heads, but controlling jealousy. Uh, some it is rage. Some it is anger. And, and to most, it is an unending, an unending struggle that we go through. You're like, I think I've overcome. I think I'm victorious. That is why God is bringing us a word that will cause us to walk in victory over all these emotions the enemy would like to throw at us. Now, to all of us that are struggling in different aspects of, you know, these emotional challenges, which I want to call negative emotions, God wants to give us freedom from these negative feelings. And I tell you what, when you get delivered from these negative emotions, I tell you it surpasses deliverance from sicknesses like cancer. Yes, to get out of that. <laughs> Because in desperation, some believers today have even sought the counsel of secular psychiatrists or psychologists. You know, they go out there seeking for help, you know, because we're desperate. We just want to come out of these emotional challenges. And, and, and we seek all kinds of uh, secular professionals to help us. But we know one thing, the world system is going to teach us, you got to cope. They teach us coping mechanism. Our God doesn't just come around and give us some kind of medication and coping mechanism. No, that doesn't represent our God. He gives us deliverance. He breaks the back of the enemy and sets us free. And I believe that is what God is bringing us this morning to give us total deliverance from every form of negative emotion that has held us down. God wants you to come out of it. If you believe it, say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> 
Now, when we go out there, we are only told that, you know, just cope with it. You must learn to accept yourself. That is what they tell us out there, accepting the good with the evil or the good with the bad. The reason is you are the way you are because uh, some will even tell you it's because of your childhood environment, the environment you grew up in. That is why you are what you are today. So you got to accept yourself. You know, you got abused by your father. You got abused by your parents, your uncle, whoever the case may be. Accept yourself that way. Now, if I wanted to accept myself that way, man, I would have been slapping my wife all day. I would have been beating my kids all day. Joe, you know what I mean? I would be doing some crazy stuff. Talking about my environment. Man, my father was crazy. I mean crazy. So if I was to allow my environment to detect what kind of a father I would be or what kind of a husband I would be, Man, there was no day my father didn't see me. Now, if you grew up in some African homes, your good morning doesn't come verbally. It comes with some kind of, yeah. Good morning is not like good morning. You know what I mean? You wake up in the morning, they hold your ears. Have you brushed your teeth today? <laughs> now, you come in the morning to the living room and daddy meets you and he's like, have you brushed your teeth today? That's the good money you got in Africa. In some places. So don't get, at least my home I can testify. America things are different. When you go to sleep, you're like, honey, have a good night. Have a good night, honey. Now in Africa, some places you're like, did you lock the door? Have you checked the windows? No, it's different. Your environment can really frame your mind. It can turn you to somebody that has a lot of phobia. So even though you are in America where security is different, you, 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 your body is in Af America, but your mind is still in Africa. That is why there are African men that have lived in America for 20 years. They would never kiss their wife in public. It's a taboo. Growing up, we never saw daddy and mommy do anything like that. Brother Jerome, am I right? <laughs> now i'm just trying to help somebody understand that as a child of god when you get born again bible says you are translated from the kingdom of this world whether it's a kingdom of africa the kingdom of the caribbean the kingdom of america whatever kingdom you belong to and you've now been brought into the kingdom of his dear son where things are done totally different and so you don't belong to the kingdoms of this world anymore you belong to the kingdom of god and so you seek to do things the way the kingdom of God does it. I'm not going to do my marriage the way my father did it, my mom did it. Yes, there are some good examples I could potentially learn from them. But what does the book tell me to do? It says, husband, love your wives and wives submit. How does the Bible teach me? That must be my model and not a model of the world. The Bible makes very clear that there are two genders. And I got to know that. Everything God wants you to know is in his word. Amen. So we do not allow the world to teach us how we got to do things. Man, I, I grew up with my father that was always under the influence. Talk about the influence. Influence of alcohol. And I, when I talk about the alcohol, you, it's alcohol you have never known. Some of you think you drink. You think you drink vodka. You, dr you drink tequila. You drink what, what else do you guys drink? What do you drink? Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Hennessy. What else do you drink? Jasterinian Brooks. JMB. <laughs> Modelo. Corona. You drink all this crazy stuff, right? Now, you you now, every single one of these drinks have what they call the alcohol in it recorded on the label. My father drinks something that was labelless. It was labeled. It has no label. In fact, some of the things he drank, you couldn't bring it close to fire. It will flame up. <laughs> Those of you from Africa, you know what I'm talking about. Jamaicans talk about rum. You haven't seen this one. No, I'm talking about alcohol that when it is being distilled, 
and you pass by the neighborhood, your walking can change. Just passing by the neighborhood where it is being brewed. Yes. And some of this alcohol is made from nails. No, I'm, I'm, that's, it's made from metals. They put these nails in water to rust and they make alcohol out. It's just like the prison system in America. They do what they call pooch. The prisoners are so desperate, they use the toilet bowl, the water in the toilet bowl to make alcohol. They call it pooch. Some of you don't know. You are so blessed. That's how they make alcohol in the prisons. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 